we begin this video with the uh, DreamWorks phase. So anyway, if this one's going to be all about cap switches, um, you know, this is a big and confusing game and it can be hard for people to find stuff in it. So if you want a quick reference video for where to find the cap switches, uh, this is not the one for you because it's going to be kind of long and meandery and have no editing because that's my style. So uh, anyway, we're going to start out by going over to Silent Hall, which uh, now features an owl that wasn't here before. And here we have, you know, the office space stapler painting, as I always refer to it. I pop in here, and we should be able to hit the switch. Yep, there it is. It's uh, it's right there. Yep, there's no, definitely no level. <laughs> so, um, I wasn't actually expecting this to happen on the first shot, but uh, we're just gonna roll with it. So, yep, that was uh, that was definitely the, the blue cap switch. There's there's no level leading up to it or anything. No, sir. Um, anyway, yeah, you know, you hit that and then you go through and there's kind of a rest of a level here, but, uh, obviously because I'm, you know, kind of dancing around the issue, this isn't the, uh, this isn't the full story. So let's actually reload again. And, uh, that's more like it. Yeah, you're more likely to get this level. So it's kind of, you know, threw a little bit of a wrench into my plan of how to, you know, handle pacing in this but yeah you can get you can get either level here uh the one i got first was the one that was in point seven um that was just called vanish cap within the plexus and uh i have dubbed it blue switch palace and called this one the new vanish cap within the plexus you're more likely to get this one this one also has some uh kind of tricky platforming in it these platforms can be a little annoying to deal with there's going to be some weird flippy stuff in a second here. Oh no, I died. So, uh, if you don't want to bother with all that, lucky you, there's a way around it that isn't just hoping you get the other level. Because if you want, you can do a spinning triple jump. And uh, make sure to hold A the entire time so you can get the max distance, because Mario falls slower when you hold A. Just kind of want to round this corner here. And uh, pop down here, and there is the switch. Now, you'll still have to actually play the level properly if you want to get, like, the red coin star, but if you're just here for that, then that is an option. So, that one's pretty simple. Uh, let's go after wing cap next, because that one is uh, probably the second most useful. Vanish cap is used in a lot of places uh, within the castle, just for getting around and stuff. Wing cap is... Uh, you know, good for some levels. Metal cap, not used terribly often, but it's got a couple of uses here and there. So, you want to come up here to the Plexal upstairs, go around into this door, pop in here. And this is the level called um, Sky High Pathway. Here we have a simple flips reference. And basically this is going to be a straight shot to the... Uh, end of the level, which is going to have the pipe to the actual wind cap level. Now, there's actually uh, two to, two different places you can get wind cap in. I just figured we'd start with this one, because it's uh, available with no stars. So if you want to get it right away at a start of a new file, you can do that. Honestly, not a whole lot to say about this place. It's a, uh, you know, decent enough platforming challenge in some senses. It's definitely not what I'd call a hard level, but you know, if you're not super used to Mario 64, it might give you a little trouble here and there. Triple jump and float is a very useful skill to have. Also, in the uh, 0.7 version of this level, when you uh, approached this box up here, it used to suck you away into a checkerboard void. Uh, here it just actually contains the star properly. But we're not here for the star. We're just going to hop in the pipe. And so now we're in Tower of the Wing Cat Beta. Uh, there's nothing on this first little wall that you're on, so you want to long jump over here and pop into the cannon. Now in this hack, when you shoot out of the cannon, you uh, automatically fly. So it doesn't really matter where you aim, but we're going to be heading over to this other wall over here. Get into a second cannon. 
You may ask, what's the point of the wing cap if you can already fly from the cannons? Well, for one, it's to uh, be able to fly without a cannon, because not all levels have one. Um, and also, the wing cap actually does something a little extra in this game. So yeah, fly over to this tower, bonk the switch. And let's uh, pop back down to the beginning just to show it off. If I can do so without the camera screwing me over. I also have to hope I don't die from fall damage. I don't know why I said that. I could clearly see I had no damage. I knew it wouldn't take more than four, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, in the original game, you can't really gain height with wing cap, but in this, uh, you can fly as high as you want until you hit the level barrier. It's a nice little change. So, like I said, that's the first of the uh, wing cap stages. There is a second one. We'll go show that off. But first, I want to go show the uh, metal cap switch. Or more accurately, let's show where it isn't. So, in beta lobby B, the one that has the two on the second door, pop over here. And this is the level that uh, used to be called metal cap under the water. And I, uh, you know, I... I'm not in charge of the naming, but, you know, for my own personal records, I have now renamed this level Drenched Trenches because uh, there is no metal cap switch here anymore, except for when there occasionally is. So let's uh, take a look at an alternate reality here. Yep, there it is. It's, uh, you know, it shows up when it feels like it. If you want to know how I got it to spawn, just look at my star count. It should kind of, you know, tell you the whole picture here. You need that many stars to get the switch to appear. Anyway, um, so let's actually pop into a uh, file that has a lot of stars in it so we can go over wherever we want. I say a lot, this is 55, and the maximum in this game as I currently know it is uh, 177 or 180. Oh, this stupid dead end lobby. Bit difficult to say what the actual total is, and uh, we're probably going to have a video on that, but uh, we'll touch on that a little later. So yeah, you want to go to Lobby A, which is usually where you go when you go in the front door. Um, but yeah, it's the one with the one on the second door. Pop in here. Up to the uh, third floor beta. And all we got to do is just go in the door on the right here. And in this one, we actually have a few different ways we can go, but we're just interested in the center painting here with the clouds. This one is called Wing Cap by the Rainbow Highway. And uh, I have a tendency to uh, get overconfident with this Koopa shell and fall off the level, so we'll see if that happens. If it does, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So, here's something kind of interesting. Uh, Mips is actually in this level. It shows up uh, once after 15 stars and once after 50. This is the 50 one. Let's go ahead and snag that. Not, you know, important for what we're doing now, but I figure we'll do that anyway. That was, uh, that was actually the last star ever discovered in the last public version, 0 0.7, because it was... Uh, just kind of obscure. Uh, there it wasn't so hard to see him, but in the uh, last version, the platform surrounding that tower was a lot smaller. It didn't actually have, like, clearance around the sides. You had to kind of twirl around it or, like, fall from above. And uh, Mips was all the way in the back, and... Mips was also just weird. There's a whole thing with... Uh, it despawns if you collect the wrong one. That, uh, believe it or not, might actually be coming up later in this video, but uh, we'll worry about that when it comes up. Anyway, there's the other wing cap. Either one works. So, aside from the fact that uh, the metal cap usually doesn't like to show up in that other stage, I, you know, could stop being, like, coy about it and actually say what I did to make it show up, but... And eh, we'll leave that one for people to figure out for a little longer. Um, the much more likely way that you'll find the metal cap is in a different level. 
So first, you know, we got to say hi to Daniel, the white pixel here. But, uh, yeah, I come around castle to the back, go into Crescent Castle. And uh, there's actually two entrances to the metal cap level. I'm just going to show the faster one. So if we pop through here, you know, after a few more doors and random cracks in the wall and whatnot, we're going to end up in the Plexal Basement. This place is pretty big and windy, but thankfully we just want to go over here. And this leads to a level that uh, used to just be known as Lethal Cavern. Uh, I have redubbed it Metal Cap in the Lethal Cavern because that's the naming scheme for these types of things. And uh, like I said, there's actually two ways to access this one. The other one is, I think it's on floor 3B, which is one of the ones with the super slow music. And it's got the room with like a whole bunch of colored boxes and toad. It gives you a star. And, that kind of stuff. But yep, here's the last switch. It's already pressed because this is a uh, file that I've done a bunch of stuff in, but yeah. There's a star up there. You can't really see it because I've already collected it, but I guarantee you it's there. And if we go over this way, we'll meet up with a, uh, a little friend. He's not hurting anybody. Oh, and we can't teleport out of here because it, uh, you know, normally I can press A, but now I can only press A. Ah! So, let's reset again. So, those are the three main switches, but uh, we're not going to actually be done with switches, because I want to show, you know, there, there's a certain other one that people probably want me to talk about, and I'll talk about it to, you know, some capacity. So, before we get to that, I want to show something else. So, this is totally off topic in, it, as far as cap switches go, but it kind of ties, it, it all ties together. So, we're going to pay a visit to the Crimson Hallway here, where there is another MIPS. I'm not going to grab him, I'm just showing that he's there. So, now let's pop into the Lobby A, go into the courtyard. And if we go above the entrance here, lo and behold, Mario, please, we've got MIPS again. So those are actually all three of the MIPS locations. And the reason I showed that other one is because this one is specifically in what the game considers an overworld map, not like a numbered level or anything. And so this is kind of the master one. If you get a star from this one, whether it's the 15 or the 50, it's going to despawn the other ones. So like if I get the if I get the 15 star from this one before I get the others, the the 15 stars from those two are actually going to be unobtainable. Um and then they'll all reappear when I get 50 stars, but then the same thing's going to hold true there. So right now, I've collected that star. And if we go back to the crimson hallway, we will see that uh, Mips is no longer going to be there. And so because I actually saved, I have now more or less uh, completely messed up the save file. I have a backup, so it doesn't really matter. But, yep, he's gone. I can never get that star again. That one is uh, star ID 1-5. Uh, now, why the hell am I talking about MIPS in this video that's talking about cap switches? Um, like I said, it all kind of comes together in the end, so just bear with me for a second here. So first we need to go to the Genesis basement, which we can get to fast by going down here. And now we have, uh, you know, about five hours worth of hallways to traverse, so... Thankfully I have not prepared any subject matter to discuss during this time, and you just get to watch me do it. But no, the MIPS thing was, uh... It was also an issue in point seven. I assume it was left in on purpose. Uh, in this game, there's actually one less than there was in point seven because there was a duplicate of the overworld MIPS in the vanilla basement. Now we've got something else in the vanilla basement. But uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. 
So yeah, after a uh, bit of a long trek, we get through here. There's our old friend, the Green Star, which uh, may or may not have a purpose. It's still a bit unclear. And here we have a pipe. So, welcome to the Holy Yellow Switch Palace. And as soon as we get a little bit closer, there it is. Now, in point seven, if I went anywhere near this thing, the game would crash. Uh, now, that is not the case, and I can approach it freely. So let me explain what this thing used to do. In the last version, uh, when you hit it, it would randomly cycle the... Uh, basically which of the five overworld stars were active. Um, it was like the toad stars and the, the ones from the overworld MIPS. Um, it would also make you lose your hat permanently. And those were the main things it did. It also had some lesser known things such as uh, unlocking a bunch of doors, mainly ones in like vanilla lobby. In this game, it sort of does a similar thing. It takes your hat away and um, it randomly cycles the caps that are available. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show some of what it does here. So I've got the star tracker open on the side. Right here, these are the 15 star and 50 star overworld maps. And then we had uh, the one that was in the Rainbow Highway are these two. Ones in Crimson Hallway are these two. And I never got that second one. So let's just go ahead and hit the switch. And uh, yeah, it kind of does some stuff. So did you notice that my stars over here are now drastically different than they were a second ago? I'm going to go ahead and hit this a few more times. I love this one. Unused, but this is good. Only those with a truly unbreakable spirit shall come face to face with the final truth. Is it worth it? There's a, there's a lot of dialogue this can show. Uh, some of it, you know, with accompanying sound effects or little ditties that'll play after the fact. Always messes up the textures. It, uh... I don't know. It just kind of messes with stuff, but, um... As I said, in addition to the overworld stars changing, it's also turning on and off the cap switches. And it's also turning on and off the Bowser keys. But here's the thing, this game doesn't actually have Bowser keys. So if we look at another feature in the star display, we can look at the list of flags here. And these are all the flags that are now considered active in the game. So. You know, we've got the Vanish Cap switch listed here. There's the flag for that. We've got Bowser 1 key that is listed uh, nowhere, apparently, because it doesn't have it there, so I don't know what that's about. But um, it also says Cap snow Stolen by Snowman. Um, let's test that theory. Yep, Cap's gone. Where's the Snowman? You're probably never going to find it. To my knowledge, this uh, cap is never coming back. So, I've mentioned in another video that uh, you should probably never press the yellow switch because its effects are irreversible and it can really mess up your game. Um, I still sort of stand by that, but here's the thing is I don't really know what this thing does. I've heard claims of what it does. Okay, now that time I actually kept my hat. Um... I guess it's because, you know, I got lucky and the flags for that didn't get activated. But, uh, let's see if something else got activated. Because I've heard of a very annoying thing that this Switch can do, and I haven't actually seen it firsthand, but I kind of want to see if it happens here. I just need to grab a star, so we're gonna YOLO off this mountain and grab one. I, I didn't line it up well, but that's fine. And let's see if it does it right. Yeah, okay. So, you might not realize it at first, but there was a problem there. Because in 1.0, or, you know, 0 0.9, whatever we're calling this version, normally when you collect a star in a painting, it's supposed to eject you from the painting. 
here, it didn't do that. It put me in the Plexal upstairs. Um, and that's going to hold true for every other painting in the game. So, you know, a very nice quality of life feature that was introduced in this update uh, has now been torn away from you by random chance. It doesn't always do that, because in I've actually tried to record this video a few times, and uh, it didn't do that the last time I tried, but it usually took my hat away. So, basically, all I know is, you know, the Switch messes with you. It, uh... It can't always be predicted, and I don't know if the full list of things it can do. Um, there's some other stuff that can happen in this game just from playing it. Uh, it's, you know, I don't have a full list of that either, but, you know, if you play long enough, enemies are going to start spawning in places where they normally won't. You'll get the weird, like, blue coin or purple coins that drain your health. Sometimes you'll see uh, silver coins that can do some weird stuff, and... None of those are caused by the yellow switch, but I think the yellow switch might influence them. And, uh... I've been warned against hitting it and then reloading a save state. I don't know if that's changed, because now that I've reloaded the state, if I look at my flags again, it actually looks pretty normal. But I'm not gonna be... I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, like, oh yeah, it's totally safe, just hit it anyway. Um... Because it probably, you know, it, it's messing with stuff. It's, th this thing is meant to just kind of mess with the player, and if you want that, then great. If you don't want to deal with it, then you're not going to be able to turn it off again later. But, uh, let's go back to the whole subject of MIPS. So, I just pressed it again, and by random chance... Oh, that was a game crash. Okay, let's try that again, actually. Eh, let's keep going. Come on. Game. Work with me. Okay. By random chance, uh, you know, it took me a few tries, but uh, it has turned off Overworld Star 5. So, remember what that was tied to? Let's, uh, let's go find out. Lo and behold, he's back. And since the Master Mips is back, that should mean that the one in the Crimson Hallway is back, too. The one that I said I would be permanently locked out of. And, uh, nope, he's there. I could get the star if I wanted. So, yeah, through chance, you know, you can get that to happen. But, uh, it's, it's purely up to luck. And I'm going to take a second here and just re-explain something with the stars, because uh, the yellow switch is a, uh, it's an, you know, it's an agent of chaos. Uh, without, you know, save stating and just reloading and hoping to get it to do what you want it to do, you can't have reliable effects happen. But because it does cycle these overworld stars, you can actually get a higher star total than you're intended in this game. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the highest that I currently know to exist is 177. There could be some that I missed. I just learned of another star earlier today. It was a duplicate, but, you know, there could very easily be other ones that I just don't know about yet. But, um, if you hit the switch and get lucky enough, the max is 180. Because of the overworld stars, we already know of the two from MIPS. Uh... Number three is a weird one, because I know where it is in the game. I've collected it with the Levitate code, but I don't know if you can actually get it legit. Uh, one and two don't exist anywhere. Six and seven are just kind of other overworld stars that you can collect somewhere. I don't remember offhand exactly. I know one of them is the red coins in the uh, Castle Garden. Let me actually check what the other one is. It's a very professional video, I realize. Ah, yes. Okay, yeah. One of them is red coins in the uh, in the Uncanny Courtyard. The other one is in the Parallel Basement, as I call it. Um, kind of an extension of the Vanilla Basement. There's a, uh, there's a red star in there. So, there's all those. And then star at number eight is kind of weird, actually. Um... <sighs> 
how do I explain star number eight? Let me see if I can showcase it here. So right now it says I have 57, and, you know, there's two of them listed here. I think if I click in and out of the window, it changes my star count. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, so, you know, now there's, now there's more listed, but the numbers aren't quite adding up, and... <sighs> Basically, this star just doesn't count. Overworld 8. It's kind of weird. Like, the tracker can show it, but it will never actually add to your total, much in the way that uh, the green star and some of the red stars don't add to your total. So, what all this essentially means is, you know, if you want a perfect file with the maximum number of stars, uh, you're going to have to hit this switch, and you're going to have to hope that it gives you uh, one, two, and three, because you can't get them any other way. Uh, if it turns off any of the other ones, you can recollect them. And then if it gives you eight, you know, that's a bonus, but it doesn't do anything for you. So, that's, uh, that's about all I know on this Switch. I, uh, you know, even if I did know more about it, I think there's, it's best to have a little bit of mystery surrounding this thing, because this game does some weird stuff under the hood. It's uh, not all stuff that I know about either. It's just, uh, you know, the more you play it, the more weird stuff you find. I believe that's about it. Uh, only other thing I want to say is there is another yellow switch in the game. If you find that one, just go ahead and press it. It's fun. It doesn't do anything bad.